In this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily create this freeze frame intro in Premiere Pro. Stick around. Here inside Premiere Pro, the first thing I'm gonna do to create this effect is go to the spot on the clip that I want the effect to begin. So let's say like 11, 20 is good for me. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a cut in that spot. So I'm gonna grab the razor tool or just press C on the keyboard, cut that clip and then press V on the keyboard to bring back up the selection tool. Next, I'm just going to right click on the clip that I just cut and go down to add frame hold. And that's going to freeze everything on this clip. Then what I wanna do is create a duplicate of this clip here. So I'm just gonna hold down option or alt on the keyboard. I'm gonna click and drag up onto video layer number two. Then what I wanna do is make sure that I have the duplicate layer on video layer number two selected. Then I'm gonna go up here under effects controls to opacity and select the pen tool. Now what I wanna do is I want to mask out my entire subject. So I'm gonna just make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to make sure that I'm precise with this because the more precise you are, the better this effect is going to look. Then once I'm done, I'm just gonna go ahead and change this back to fit. And then I'm gonna go back over here under effects control and I wanna change the mass feather back down to zero. Then what I'm gonna do is make sure that my playhead is at the very beginning of the freeze point. And then I'm gonna go up here and click on the stopwatch for position and scale. And I'm gonna go over 20 frames. Then what I wanna do is just bring up the scale just a little bit, and I'm going to adjust the position slightly as well. Next, I'm going to select the original clip on video layer number one. I'm gonna go over to the double arrow and go down to effects, and I'm gonna type in Gaussian blur. I'm gonna click and drag Gaussian blur onto that clip, and then I'm going to check repeat edge pixels, and I'm going to bring this up to about 35. Then what I wanna do is go back over here under effects, and I'm going to type in black, and white and I'm gonna click and drag black and white onto that clip as well and that gives it that black and white blurry background the next thing I'm gonna do is go over to my mask layer right click and then go ahead and nest that clip and then press ok now what I'm gonna do is go back over here under effects and I'm gonna type in radial shadow and I'm gonna click and drag radial shadow onto that mask layer now it has this weird looking drop shadow thing, but we're gonna fix that now. So instead of the shadow color being black, I wanna change that to white. And then I'm going to bring the opacity up to 100. And now what I'm gonna do is use the light source to kind of adjust and give it that stroke look. Once I have it lined up where I want using the light source, I'm then gonna just use the projection distance to bring down the size just a little bit. And that looks pretty good to me. If you have issues giving it that stroke look, you can go down here to resize layer, check that box and play around with the projection distance and do it that way. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and bring up my nested sequence to video layer number four, because I'm gonna be adding my paint splatter look as well as my text here in just a second. The next thing I'm gonna do is drag in my paint splatter that I created in Photoshop. And you can find the same paint splatter in a link down in the description. I'm just gonna go over here to the finder window and click and drag this onto video layer number two. I just wanna extend this to make sure it goes the entire length of the video. And I wanna change this from the black paint splatter color to a different color. So I'm gonna go back over here under effects and I'm gonna type in change to color. I'm gonna click and drag change to color onto that paint splatter layer. And then I'm gonna go over here under effects controls and go down to the change to color effect. And I'm gonna change from utilizing the color picker. I'm gonna click on that black paint splatter. And then I'm gonna go over to where it says two and I'm gonna change this to whatever color I want. So I'm just gonna use like a blue. This looks good to me and just press okay. Then what I'm gonna do is go to this little drop down arrow where it says hue here and change to hue, lightness and saturation. And then I'm gonna go down under tolerance here and change the hue up to 100%. And that's going to give it that blue color. The next thing I wanna do is bring in some text. So I'm gonna go down here to the type tool, select this button here, click anywhere within my frame, and I'm going to type whatever I want the text to say. Go ahead, back over here under effects controls and drop down this little text portion here. I'm gonna center this up. Then I'm going to select the selection tool, go back up here to the graphics tab, go here to edit, and then I'm gonna select my text and this is where I'm gonna make some fine tune adjustments. So first thing I wanna do is make sure that I have my text all selected. And I'm gonna go down here and change my font to surfing capital. And I'm gonna bring this up in size just a little bit, kind of position this where I want within the frame. I wanna make sure that that text is on video layer number three. And the same thing, I'm going to extend it so it goes the entire 
portion of the frozen footage. So it's the same length as my mask layer. Click back on that text layer. That looks pretty good to me. Also what I can do is grab the mask layer and the text layer, bring it up to video layers four and five, and I'm going to duplicate this paint splatter layer. And what I wanna do is select video layer number two's paint splatter, and I'm gonna go over here under effects controls and scroll down to where it says change color, and I wanna change this color to white. Press okay. There's a couple of other things that I need to do in order to get this to work. So I'm gonna bring up the size of this paint splatter just a little bit. And as you can see, it's kind of got that gray look to it. So I'm gonna scroll back down here and I wanna change the softness down to zero and it's gonna give you that white look. And then I can just go back and adjust the scale as I need to. I think that looks pretty good right there. Then I'm gonna go back in here, adjust my text, make sure it's positioned where I want it. Bring Pro down in size just a little bit more. Now what I wanna do is go back into my nested sequence. Then I'm gonna select the clip, go up here to the very last keyframe and then I'm just going to press M on the keyboard and that's going to create a marker on my nested sequence. This is gonna come in handy here in just a second. I'm gonna click back on that first clip and this marker is now showing up on this nested sequence so that's gonna tell me where that clip has been zoomed all the way in. And that's important because I'm about to animate the scale of the text as well as the paint splatter. Then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select my text and all of my paint splatters, right click and then select nest and press okay. And that's gonna put all of that into one clip. Then I'm gonna take my playhead and make sure it's at that marker on my original mask clip. Then what I wanna do is select my new nested layer that has my text and paint splatters. And I'm gonna go in here and set a stopwatch keyframe for position, scale, as well as rotation. And then I'm going to go to the very beginning of that nested sequence. And I'm going to increase the scale. I'm also going to increase the rotation also the position. Now, whenever I play it back, it's starting to look pretty good. Now, if that seems to be coming in a little bit too fast for you, you're not really happy with that, what you can do is go back into this nested sequence layer here. And what I'm gonna do is click and grab these last two keyframes and drag them out a little bit further. I'm gonna remove this marker here and then go to these last two keyframes and then press M on the keyboard again. Go back into your original project and you'll see that the marker has changed its position. Then what I'm gonna do is go into my paint splatter layer and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna grab those three keyframes, hold down shift and drag it over to that new marker. Then when I play it back, it's looking a lot better. Now we just gotta add the icing on the cake. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and nest all three of these layers here. Press okay. And then I'm gonna go up here to the editing tab Go over here to effects, then I'm gonna type in dip to white. I'm gonna click and drag dip to white in between the frozen layer as well as the main clip. And then I'm going to select that transition, go up here to where it says alignment and select center at cut. And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna have a little bit of a flash and it's gonna flash into the new intro effect. And that's it. Continue to perfect your skills by checking out this video. Edit like a pro by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. I'll see you in the next video.